I thought they'd be able to get more for Tyler O'Neill, who I have a feeling now that he's motivated and he's in a walk year, and now it's Boston where he can just mash balls off the green monster. I just have a feeling he's going to be pretty good for the Red Sox. And I, I said this on Twitter. I, I don't know. I mean, if he's healthy, he's going to be good. The question is, can he stay on the field? But I know one thing, and that's that the very same people that are on social media mocking him for being injury prone are going to be the first, if he's healthy, and lights it up there to rip the Cardinals for letting Tyler O'Neill go. That, I think, is the only certainty. Well, yeah. I think it's – I think for me, I'm slightly underwhelmed. you got to see how this plays out. This Robertson, who is on the 40-man, could be in the bullpen this year. But he also – I saw John Denton from MLB.com. He posted – another writer for MLB.com who covers prospects and whatnot, and they said this guy throws 93 to 98 and big strikeout guy. That's but a he big also, swath, by the way, 93 to Well, 90. if you're talking about like what you're topping out at 98, he probably sits 93 to 95, but he's the Cardinals' 26th ranked prospect. So from a prospect standpoint, he can't be that great. Cardinals' farm system isn't that good for him to slot in as 26. So I think right now I agree with you, Kat, because I just think – a highly motivated Tyler O'Neill in his walk year. I feel like could you get the same package at the trade deadline? Now he wasn't going to sign here after next year, so it's not like you had this ridiculously huge market. I, I'm I'm slightly underwhelmed. If Nick Robertson ends up being Giovanni Gallegos, then it's a good trade, and I think a good trade to bring up is that trade because the Cardinals traded Luke Voigt, and everybody said immediately it's the worst trade ever. Luke Voigt went off in the COVID year, yeah, led yeah. the league in homers. We love Luke Voigt, but he hasn't done much since. Giovanni Gallegos has been the Cardinals' probably second-best reliever for four years. So if Nick Robertson becomes something like that, I think it'll be a good deal. Face value, though, right now. Face value, underwhelmed. Don't you think they – yeah, they probably could have gotten more. I don't know. I don't know. They have needs, too. That's the other thing. Like, they're still going to have to get someone for the bullpen because if if these guys work out, it's still a question mark. you got to get – a known quantity for the bullpen now, don't you? Still? Yeah, I just I don't know if you could have gotten more. So I'm not going to say that, hey, Mosellock could have gotten more. But I think you could make the argument that him here for a year, motivated in his walk year, was more valuable. I, yeah, I like him. And I, I think he's going to do really, really well. And here's the thing, too. Like, okay, he got – he was injury prone. No question. Had trouble staying on the field. He did get sideways with the Cardinals over not busting it on that one play, but there was more. There were also, you know, questions and disagreements, I think, over how he was rehabbing. So it kind of wasn't going to work out here. And so you get that, you got to move him. I just thought they'd be able – I'm not saying they would get an all-star or whatever, just a guy with a more quantifiable resume. How about a guaranteed major leaguer? Okay. Is that fair? Yeah. Like yeah. a guy who you could slot right now and say he's going to yes. be in the bullpen for 2024. Do we all agree that Tyler O'Neill is going to hit, let's say, 25 to 30 homers in Boston? Next year? Yeah. I'll say that in the next two years, Tyler O'Neill will hit 30 home runs in one of those seasons. All right. I'm going to say this year he's going to hit 28 homers and hit over 270. This guy's a talent as much as he's been ridiculed because he's hurt all the time. Yeah. He's a talented guy. Two-time gold glover. He's a hell of an athlete, you know. I like that. And, uh, and I'll say it again. The odd thing about it, with all the injuries he's had, is he was told all through his minor league career, you're too big, you, you know, you're going to get hurt. And he wasn't. He went through his minor league career relatively unscathed, proving people wrong. Then he gets to be a big leaguer, and that's when he runs into it. Yeah. I guess as you get older, things crop up. More. Yeah, but he is too big. You know? Like, he's too big. Remember when— He truly is. <laughs> Remember, though, <laughs> you know? was, it, was it a couple off-seasons ago, the report was, oh, he's training different now. And then he comes to sprint, and he's like, oh, he looks, he looks the same. Jacked out of his mind. He's Remember doing the uh, 10 to 12 reps instead of— Remember the picture they sent out? Two to four, yes. And then we look at it like, hmm. You mean, is he skinnier? No. 
He's gigantic. Dude, I'll never forget. <laughs> it was it was an awe moment, and I'm sure, Kat, you were there. They make that trade for Tyler O'Neill. whenever it was. Was it off season? I think so. Okay, so for Marco Gonzalez. And so, you know, most people, you hadn't heard of this guy, so you go to baseball reference, maybe you see a head and shoulder shot, you look at his stats, blah, blah, blah. I'll never forget when he walked into winter warm-up, into the podium, and nobody, nobody really knew who he was. And he looked like freaking Mr. Olympia. Yeah. This dude walks in, tight shirt, tight jeans, just jacked out of his mind, and nobody knew who he was. Like, hey, guys, we're like, hey, you know, Charlie, oh, oh Tyler O'Neill. Oh, yeah, of course, Tyler O'Neill. Yeah, 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 we know you. You just got traded for. Just nobody knew who he was, and he walks in looking like a, a freaking bodybuilder. Yeah, man. He's, oh, uh, he's also a really, like, he's a down-to-earth guy. He kind of a little different. Like, I don't think he's out partying or anything. He got married, you know, pretty young. He's just a decent guy that just didn't work out here, you know. Uh, Wombat wants to bet you. Throw a what? bet. He goes, oh, on home runs? Yeah. No, he said, Cat, I'll bet you 100 bucks, bro. Neil doesn't play more than 60 games next season. 60? That's low. I'm not going to bet 100 bucks. 100 bucks for 60 for games? 60? Damn, I'd do that. What do you guys bet? Energy drink? Yeah, but, but 60 but you is don't low. Get it. Frank bets milkshakes. Charlie, bet, does, Charlie bet, doesn't get the energy I'll drink. bet you an energy drink that he plays more than 60. That's really Do low. I, would you bet him 100 bucks? You want to bet him? For 60, yes. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to bet yeah. with a listener 100 bucks. You can be injured twice and still play 60 games. Yeah. You can be injured you three You want to take times. that bet? You sure you want to take that bet, Wombat? You want to do it, Charlie? I mean, didn't he play? He was injury prone the last two years and still played, I believe, about 90 and wow. 72. Jump on this. He's played 60 games every year except the COVID year. Jump on this. 60? He played 138 his good year. Yeah, but the bar was set at 60, right? Okay, so the COVID year he played 50 out of 60, which is healthy. Right. So I'm saying every year, not named the COVID year, he's played at least 60 Oh, games. so you're, yeah. you're on my side. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But watch. If he does go to Boston and lights it up, you cheap chokers. Oh, yeah. They'll be thrown around for sure. Now people are mocking him. They'll be thrown around. Only because they got nothing in return. No. Pre- presumably. No, I'm saying they're mocking him for being injury prone. Well, yeah. You'll forget that you mocked him, too, I'm sure, somewhere along the line. Nah. Were you hard on him? Well, I mean, it's hard not to be when you're hurt all the time. And there's drama going on. And I just didn't think he had much value. I didn't think he was talentless. I thought his strikeouts were a concern. But I didn't think he was reliable. Like, oh, Tyler O'Neill, he's having a big comeback season. Really? Well, off of what? All these injuries that he's had? Yeah. So, I, I, I just thought he was always hurt. You'd love to have him on the Pirates. Yes, you would. <laughs> For what? Seventy-two games? <laughs> More than sixty. Better than the crap they got over there. And here's I another mean. thing I'd say about it. Listen, I understand. Probably not. He'd probably fit right in with the crap that we got. Carlson, yeah. more control, all that switch hitter, blah blah blah. But if if they're going to be a fourth outfielder, I would rather have Tyler O'Neill. I understand Tyler O'Neill only has one year of control left. I just think he's proven it. And you can say it was twenty twenty one. I get it. What has Carlson done? Get hurt. He's been injured a lot too. But he, but he also, they're both injured all the time. But Tyler O'Neill has actually done it. He was eighth in the MVP. I understand that was three years ago, and I get it. But like the potential is there. Carlson, we've seen okay a little bit here. He looked pretty good in the outfield for a stretch there, where he's making some great grabs. You can't, you can't dispute whether or not Tyler O'Neill is talented. If a guy's done it and then can't do it again because of injury. It means he's injury prone. It doesn't mean he's not talented. That, that I, that's a fair point to make. Tyler O'Neill has done it. Carlson has not. No, he has I also not. think too, to be honest, if Carlson's your fourth outfielder, probably easier to live with than Tyler O'Neill for whatever reason not playing every day. I don't think that would uh, that would end well. Disrupt the room a little bit. I don't know. You know, is he a locker room cancer? I don't think he is. I just think. A I guy think he's a loner. He's a little different. You know, I think he probably hangs out by himself and things like that. That's why back. Well, he's got look, a kid at home. A lot of people, I'm talking about on the road and stuff like that oh, with oh, the teammates oh. and going to dinner maybe. I think he's, he's just a loner. Now, I don't, I don't know, know if he's but, a loner, but he, I'm just saying he's not, he's not one of those guys who are going to be out at the club as far as I know. Yeah. And I, I, I do think, too, like back in the beginning of all this, when people said, oh, Ali lost the room with that because he, you know, went after one of the young guys. No, no, he didn't because there were other issues. There were, I mean. What were they? 
Well, I, I, I kind of laid out that, one, they didn't like the way he went about uh, his rehabbing. There was some disagreement about that. Um, and the, the whole thing with the base running. I'm just saying that I, he didn't lose the room over it. I, I said it back in the day. Now, you could call back to something that someone wrote that they saw someone else say. I'm just telling you, he didn't back in the day. The room wasn't lost when, when Ali criticized Tyler. So how did he lose it, though? How did he lose the room? I don't think he did. I think they were an awful team, and it's not because he didn't lose the room. I'm kidding. But it's. I mean, we can say, I, I think you called it a narrative. No, we argued about that like for three, four days on this show. I'm telling you. Not with people on the show, though. Yes, you guys thought he lost the room. No one said that. Yeah, we'll Who's go you back guys? And listen to the tape. No one said that. I just for remember arguing Twitter. about yeah, it. Yeah, text line. I remember on the show arguing about it. I'm telling you, he didn't because I'm in the room, even though I'm a cheap choker and Sim. someone read something that someone else wrote six months ago. This really has <laughs> kind of stayed in your head. There's a difference between the discussion doesn't yeah, have really. to be did he lose the room. The discussion was, I think he could have handled it better in private. No, that's totally different which, than losing which, the room. Which, that's fine. That's that, that's a normal argument. But I was like, it, it had no impact on Ali's relationship with the other players. I don't I don't know anyone that disputed that. Okay. Who are you saying disputed that? I'm, gonna, wasn't even I'm just going by, mem- by memory. Well, we've... we've I'll we, go we, back and I'll, I'll go back... We've remembering before. <laughs> I'll go back... Roger and, Clemens... <laughs> What you just did when you misremembered whatever you, I said that I didn't say. And but Ukraine, I will go back. You just will, misremembered his I, mispronunciation. The price of the Ukraine war. You that? that one? I will go back and I will war. go back and listen to the tape. I will go back because I'm pretty sure we argued about it on this show. And but so I, wait. It might have been TMA. Yeah. Might have been TMA. So you think that I said that Ali lost I the room? I just remember arguing about it with someone on the show. Maybe it was Seth. I don't know. But I remember it not just being text line. Me saying, no, no, I'm in there. I'm telling you. Tyler's kind of a different guy, and it's not like he's the leader of all the young players. So Ali lost the room on that. Yeah, I don't, saying, I don't I remember anyone saying that. I've interviewed Tyler O'Neill dozens of times. He's he's fine. I'm saying from day one, I don't think it was smart for Ali. And this, I think this was the fair narrative for most people. I don't think he should have handled that publicly. That that doesn't mean you lost the room. I didn't see any value in doing that publicly. Did I think lose most people Tyler? agreed with that. Did he lose Tyler O'Neill individually? Was, he, was Tyler the, wasn't happy about it, but I don't think it was it was just that because then there were injuries and they were like, maybe you should handle it this way. And he wanted to – to be honest with you, I don't blame him on that either because it's your career and if you want to get a second opinion or you kind of got to do it. And let's face it, he has a an agent that's – working to make the most money he can off that client, right? So he says, no, you got to handle it this way. You get It's a business. Dude, I, I was going to, when I got my shoulder ripped out with the Devils, my right shoulder early in my career, they wanted uh, their doctor, Lou's doctor, for the Devils to do it. And I just remember him just having bad, hearing weird stories about it because he's cheap. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, because he's cheap. And so... That's why my agent goes, no, you're going down to Alabama and see, what's his name, who does Tommy John there, uh, James a- Andrews. Andrews. Yeah. And Lou's like, okay, go ahead. And it costs him so much more money and stuff like that. Never had a problem ever since. And I'm a fourth-line plug. And I still said, no, we don't, we're don't. we going to get a second opinion down with James Andrews, and then he's going to do Because that's your future. Yes. It's like they got, a, they're, it's all, they're, they got the bill for it, but Lou wanted to do the cheap way because that's just how he is. And then we're like, no. And then he's like, that's fine. When you say it's a business, that goes for players and the organization. I know. know. That's just the way it is. And at the end of the day, the reason all this happened is because Tyler O'Neill couldn't stay on the field. None of these other things would have mattered. They would not have went after him. Here we go. They would not. Good morning, everybody. Ali would not have publicly called him out like that. If he played 145 games the last couple years, was hitting 27 bombs, producing, healthy, they would not have called him out. Because, because the value of Tyler O'Neill and what he was giving you, okay, you, you put up with a couple things. Maybe you don't love the fact that he was running at, and we broke this down, he was at 93% of his top sprint speed yeah. on that play. You're not going to call a dude out if he's helping you win and he's playing 150 games a year. It was because the dude's always hurt, it's always something. At the end of the day, 
at the end of all of this, the, the, the major factor is Tyler O'Neill could not stay on the field. Yep. Oh, I agree with that. I think so. We found common ground. Who do we got on? Sandman? I believe it's the Sandman Sanderson. Sanderson, what's up, baby? It's been a while. <clears throat> what's up, Sam? What's up there, buddy? Uh, your favorite bartender from St. Albans. Oh, what's going on, man? <laughs> How you doing? Uh, hey, I, Hayes, I love you, Hayes. But I, I, anything you say, I know you're working for the Cardinals. I don't. So I, I don't know. work for the Cardinals. I, get, I don't work for the don't. Cardinals. I don't get a nickel from the Cardinals. Not a nickel. You don't. And they've never not, once but, told me talk about this or don't talk about that. But that's fine. Okay. Go ahead. I don't. I don't mean no, to. No, no, but I, go I, ahead. You know. You, you know say, what you're talking. You, about. Go ahead. No, no, no. If you say that, I believe you. Then. But like a lot of, I just know how they like to filter stuff and and, and convince us of things that are not there. Like but what? Anyway, like in I, this I, example, I, what? No, you know, I was here, you know, I would think an inside guy like yourself, you would be able to come up with some, you know, I guarantee you that from what I read that, that I don't think they like that guy. You know, and I don't know. But anyway. I, didn't I say, I, didn't I, I just say that there was disagreements over, <laughs> A, his base running, and, and, and B, the way he went about his rehab. He had a different idea, which I thought was okay, because it's his career. No, I, I hear you. I, I, no, no, don't call me out, though. I'm a cheap choker that works for the Cardinals. He's not where, out, where, so exa- well. where exactly He's do we disagree? Out. Okay, my friend. That's it. Here's what I wanted to say. The Blues <laughs> need to get rid of Barubi. His shelf life is over. Ooh. I believe they need a new voice behind the bench. Uh, I just – I don't see any uh, – you know, Cam, do you, when you watch this team – in, in all honesty, do you not see? I don't see any fire. Well, I don't know what. Did, did you expect them to be better than last year? If so, how? You know. Now, I Benner, did in a little ways. Yeah, I thought. It and they are like in a little ways. And, and give me, don't get me wrong, dude. They're frustrating as hell. You lost to two last place teams in the league, man. And not only did you lose, right. you got your ass kicked by them by a bunch of kids, exactly. basically a bunch of kids. You got guys on that team that aren't producing. Kapanen, Verona's on the fourth line with some kid from Chicago. They have no idea what the hell he's doing on the fourth line. He only knows the skill, the skill game. So now you put him on the fourth line. He does absolutely nothing. You got Jordan Cairo's not scoring. I mean. You don't you don't have much scoring going on. You're losing the, the worst place teams. There's not much fire. Shinner's got to go out there and get in a good fight. I like that, but damn, dude, they are frustrating. But what'd you expect? You know, I don't. What, now let me ask you this: Is there any validity? You know, when people say, you know, a coach after so many years and in, in, uh, you know, preaching the same message, does it ever get old? Where guys turn yeah, them out? Absolutely. You know, turn them out? Yes, it's a revolving you know, door in coach. the NHL with coaches, man. Maybe. I don't think it's Barubi's fault. Um, I don't. But on the other hand, you do get you, you do kind of get sick of hearing from the same guy. Now, I'm not saying that he's deserving of getting fired. I think it's on the players more than anything. You know, the power play, sure. the power play sucks. Like that's a problem. You know, you're losing games, baby, because of the power play. Now, is that on the coaching? Probably a little bit. Yeah, you got to find. They're not shooting the puck. They're just passing and passing. You got to find a way. To penetrate that puck through and get some and get some scoring opportunities, they're certainly not doing it. In fact, they're getting scoring opportunities against, which is like depressing. You get scoring opportunities against on the PK, and you're supposed to be on the power play, man. You look at that bench; they're deflated. That's a problem, you know. Right, and Barubi, you God bless him. You get a job somewhere else. I'm not being mean. Oh, hell yeah, you will. You're still gonna get. You're still gonna get paid. You know everything, but I just think it's either they bring up some new guys. Oh, they come up with a new coach because what they're doing right now, I can't even watch. It, it, I, I like just get frustrated as hell. Like, what is going on? Here, well, they man? got a little bit more room now. The two point sevens off the books with Robert Pertuzzo. They called up that McKinn kid from Chicago who played the other <laughs> night. Didn't play that much, um, so they got a little bit of wiggle room. They're probably gonna. There's a couple. There's a kid down there, uh, uh, Audet, who's 27 years old. That's, I think he's like. He's uh he's got like 15 goals, dominating. Think he's top of the league in the, in the minors. Get his ass up, see what he could do. Switch it around a little bit. You got a little bit of wiggle room. Well, but, yeah, but another thing though, these guys aren't ready. Listen, even Perunovic, Tyler Tucker, unfortunately, dude, they're getting lit up like Christmas tree, man. They're getting walked. They're they're scrambling in their own zone. Perunovic is pretty good, getting the puck out here and there, and he's slick on the line uh, in the offensive zone. But man, those guys are they NHL ready? I I don't know. Every time I see them, they're dash two. 
Right. You know, you know I, I, I'm glad to see Bennington not getting all crazy and running well, and trying to do some crazy stuff out. Like I bet he will. Playing pretty decent. I bet he will eventually. Unfortunately, yeah, I bet he will. He, I bet he will. He's going to snap. Yeah. Right. All right, my friend. All right, homie. Thanks for uh, taking my call. All right, big dog. See hey, you. Yeah. Thank you. Do you really think? Do you coach a team that I'm not aware of? <laughs> Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Do you really That's think that if they fired Baruby, they'd bring in another coach who could make this team no much better? Of no. course not. Then you don't fire the coach. Although the power play thing is tricky, and I'm that is saying, on the coach. I'm not saying that there's not plenty of blame to heap on all parties. You know, but would they be better off if they if they fired Baruby and brought someone else in? No. 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 Not even Quinville. His name's getting thrown around a little bit. If I'm a team, I'd throw – I would take a chance on Joe Quinville. Is he off the blacklist? He is – I think he's got the A-OK to go. You know what I mean? I think he – maybe not. I still – he still has to get permission, I think, from the league. But if I'm Joe Quinville, I'm coming out and talking about my story. Why are you hiding away? Like, just talk about it. Because I think he wanted some time to pass. Yeah, time's passed. You know what I mean? He's itching to get back in there, I'm sure. And he could, he could help a team out. I would roll the dice on that. I would if you're if you're the Blues, not no no because I don't want Baruby going in. I don't want Baruby going anywhere. This stuff's so goofy. I, but I would what coaching changes? No, the whole like Joe Quenville was forced out of that job in Florida a few years ago. Nothing's changed except time, and now he's okay. Now you're good to coach again. All right, now, now you're good to coach. Yeah, time heals. So is he never supposed to coach ever again? Well, yeah. If you feel that he was that much of a bad actor in I, that case. Then, I yeah. just think he made a. I think he made a mistake not getting rid of that guy. I don't think he knew everything that was going on, but I think he knew enough to where you could fire that guy. But they were in that. They were neck deep, shite kicking everybody about to win the damn Stanley Cup. Like he's got other things on his mind, but he did mess up. But yeah, time heals, man. And when you're one of the best coaches ever, and everybody loves you, this ain't Mike Babcock where people hate him. The <laughs> players hated him. They love Joel Quinville. Besides maybe a couple cats in 2010 that were no, no part of that team, those guys might not like him. But I've never met one player that didn't like Joel Quinville. Not one. It's kind of a, the actual games are a microcosm. You go in the penalty box, serve your time, you come out, all is forgiven. I mean, come, you know. I, I'm not saying, look, I think he knew. I think he, I think he handled it poorly. But I don't think he should not get a second chance ever. I'm not saying he didn't mess up, but I'd give him a second chance. 